Hello everyone. It's a pleasure presenting before you one more presentation as a marker for 30 years journey in practice. My name is my name is Munmi Fukan and my presentation will be on the concept of debentures and deposits which will provide you a brief overview on these two instruments. So moving on to the concept of debentures. Debenture is one of the most significant financial market instruments used for fundraising by the corporates. It entitles the holders a fixed rate of return in the form of interest except for zero coupon bonds. Debentures are freely transferable. Debenture doesn't carry voting rights in general meeting. Section 2, clause 30 of the Companies Act 2013 defines debentures to include debenture stock, bonds, or any other instrument of a company evidencing a debt whether constituting a charge on the assets of the company or not, except money market instruments referred to Chapter 3 of RBI Act or any other instruments as may be prescribed by the Ministry. Sometimes certain debentures are regarded as deposits. However, what all debentures are not regarded as deposits are provided in this slide. Debentures secured by first charge or charge ranking peri peso with the first charge of any assets referred to in Schedule 3 of the Companies Act 2013, which will exclude intangible assets, which are compulsorily convertible into shares of the company within 10 years, non-convertible debentures, not constituting a charge on the assets of the company and listed on a recognized stock exchange, optionally convertible debentures if issued to a company. Debentures may be classified on various grounds such as transferability, tenure, convertibility, security, and public participation. Based on transferability, debentures may be freely transferable or non-transferable. Based on tenure, debentures may be short-term or long-term. Based on convertibility, debentures may be convertible debentures or non-convertible debentures. Convertible debentures may be further be divided into Compulsorily convertible debentures, optionally convertible debentures, and contingently convertible debentures. Based on non convertibility, debentures may be redeemable or perpetual. Based on security, debentures may be secured debentures or unsecured debentures. Based on public participation, debentures may be publicly placed debentures, which will be mandatory listed, and privately placed debentures, which may be listed as well as unlisted. Section 71 of the Companies Act 2013 requires the provisions related to the issuance of debentures to be complied with. Issuance of partly or fully convertible debentures requires a special resolution as per Section 71. This section uh, further requires creation of debenture redemption reserve out of the profits of the company which shall be utilized for redemption of debentures only. Secure debentures to be redeemed within 10 years from the date of issue. However, certain companies engaged in certain sectors such as infrastructure projects, infrastructure finance companies, infrastructure debt fund NBFCs and companies permitted by the central government, RBI or any other statutory authority may issue such debentures for a period of exceeding 10 years but not exceeding 20 years. The section requires appointment of debenture trustee which is a prerequisite in case of issuance of secured debentures in case of public issue of debentures and issue of debentures to the members exceeding 500 in number. Rule 18.3 of the Share Capital and Debentures Rules 2014 lays down the duties of the debenture trustees. Liability of the debenture trustees shall be subject to such exemptions as may be agreed upon by the debenture holders holding at least three-fourths in value of the total debentures at a meeting held for the said purpose. Where at any time the debenture trustee concludes that assets are insufficient to discharge the principal amount as and when the, the same is due, the debenture trustee shall file a petition before the tribunal. If there is any default in complying with the order of the tribunal based on the petition filed by the debenture trustee, every officer in default shall be liable for imprisonment for one year which may extend to three years or with fine of rupees two lakhs which may extend to five lakhs or with both. Any contract with the company to take up and pay for debentures may be enforced by decree for specific performance. 
the eligibility criteria for appointment of debenture trustees has been provided in rule 18 of the company's share capital and debentures rules 2014. The eligibility criteria for appointment of debenture trustee has been made stricter and a debenture trustee should not be beneficially hold shares in the company. He should not be a promoter, director or KMP or any other officer or employee of the company or its holding subsidiary or associate company. He should not be beneficially entitled to monies paid by the company apart from the remuneration. He should not be indebted to the company or its subsidiary or its holding associate or sister concern. He should not have men furnished any guarantee in respect of the principal that's secured by the debentures or sec interest. He should not have any pecuniary relationship with the company during the two immediately preceding financial years or during the current financial year, which will amount to 2% or more of its gross turnover or total income or in 50 lakhs rupees or higher as may be prescribed amount whichever is lower and he should not be a relative of any promoter or any person who is in employment of the company as a director or KMP. The quantum of debenture redemption reserve to be maintained is provided in rule 18 of the company's share capital and debentures rules. The company shall create DRR equivalent to an amount of 25% of the outstanding amount However, the said requirement is not applicable for private placement of debentures made by NBFCs and HFCs. The company is required to park on or before 30th day of April each year a sum of at least 15% of the amount of its debentures maturing during the next financial year in any one or more of the following methods that is in deposits with a scheduled bank which shall be free from charge or lien, in unencumbered securities of the central government or any other state government or as mentioned in clause A to D and double E of section 20 of the Indian Trust Act 1882 or in unencumbered bonds issued by any other company which is notified under clause F of section 20 of the Indian Trust Act 1882. The money so parked can be utilized only for the purpose of redemption of debentures. The amount remaining deposited or invested shall not at any time fall below 15% of the amount of debentures maturing in that year. In case of partly convertible debentures, DRR has to be created for non-convertible portion. Section 71 subsection 8 requires the company to pay interest and redeem the debentures as per the terms and conditions of the issue of such debentures. In case of a company fa fails to pay the interest or redeem the debentures as per the terms specified at the time of issue, Though there is no specific penalties provided under section 71, however, the general penalty section that is section 450 will become applicable. In such a case, the company and the every officer who is in default or such other person shall be liable for a fine which may extend to rupees 10,000 or in case of continuing contravention, the further fine which may extend to 1,000 rupees for every day after the first during which the contravention continues. The obligation of the company for payment of interest or redemption as per terms can be understood from the figure provided in this slide. Is interest and redemption of debentures in accordance with the terms and conditions of their issue? If the answer is yes, then section 71, subsection 8 is to be taken as complied with. If the answer is no, then there is a violation of section 71, subsection 8. In that case, whether debenture trustee or any debenture holder filed a petition to NCLT? If the answer is no, then general penalty provisions that is section 450 of the Companies Act 2013 shall apply, which provides penalty on the company and every officer who is in default or any such other person. Where if the debenture trustee or any other debenture holder filed a petition to NCLT, then the NCLT will pass an order whether Order of the NCLT is complied with. If the answer is yes, then redemption of debentures with interest has to be made. If the answer is no, then every officer in default penalty shall be imprisonment up to three years or fine of at least two lakhs, which may go up to five lakhs or both. Till now, we have discussed the applicable provisions of the Companies Act 2013 and the rules made thereunder for issuance of debentures by NBNCs. However, in case of NBFCs, apart from these provisions, they will have to observe the directions, guidelines, circulars prescribed by RBI from time to time.
Certain provisions of the Companies Act 2013 are not applicable to NBFCs, such as the provisions of rule pertaining to private placement of securities that can be made by a company to maximum 200 persons in the aggregate in a financial year, the rules prescribed for acceptance of deposit from members and other, other persons are also not applicable, and the creation of DRR is not required for privately placed debentures by NBFCs. Issue of debentures by NBFCs by UFA private placement shall require observation of many regulations apart from the Companies Act 2013. The applicable regulations can be summarized as provided in this slide. Section 42 of the Act 2013 which pertains to private placement of securities. Section 71 of the Act 2013, the provisions relating to security creation, uh, creation of DRR, payment of interest, petition to NCLT, etc. In case of issue is to be listed on a stock exchange, then SEBI issue and listing of that securities regulations 2008. In case of issue of short term debentures issued by way of a private placement, uh, issuance of non convertible debentures reserve bank directions 2010. In case of issue of convertible debentures on preferential basis by listed NBFCs, then the SEBI issue of capital and fiscal requirements regulations 2009. And in case of issue of long-term debentures, issue by way of a private placement by NBFCs, RBI guidelines on private placement shall be applicable. RBI issued wide notification on February 20, 2015, the guidelines on private placement of NCDs, which are applicable for NCDs maturity of which is more than one year issued by NBFCs. The said notification was in supersession of guidelines issued on 27 June 2013 and clarification issued on 2nd July 2013. However, the guidelines are not applicable to tax-exempt bonds offered by NBFCs. As per the said guidelines, NBFCs are required to formulate a board-approved policy for resource planning covering the planning perspective and periodicity of the private placement. RBI has stipulated the guidelines majorly for issuance of private placement of NCDs of two categories, that is, with a maximum subscription of less than 1 crore, which is category A, and with a minimum subscription of 1 crore and above, which is category B. A quick comparison uh, between the category A and category B NCDs are, in case of category A NCDs, the maximum subscription shall be below 1 crore per investor. The minimum subscription shall be 20,000 per investor. The maximum number of investors shall be 200 in a financial year and subscription shall be fully secured. In case of category B NCDs, the minimum subscription of 1 crore or more per investor. There is no limit on maximum number of investor in a financial year and creation of security is optional on the issuer. So, moving on to the concept of deposits under the Companies Act 2013 and the LED. Chapter 5 of the Companies Act 2013, consisting of sections 73 to 76A and the Companies Acceptance of Deposits Rules 2014, provide the provisions related to acceptance of deposits from public as well as from the members of the company. Rule 2 of the Deposit Rules provides uh, an inclusive definition of the term deposit which will include any receipt of money by a deposit or a loan or in any other form by a company. Apparently, it will include a deposit in substance, any amount received from an LLP, any installment scheme which promises a return in cash or in kind at the end of the specified period. Rule 2 of the deposits rules provide the definition of the term deposit, which is an inclusive definition, but in a negative way as the definition excludes certain items or certain amounts from the terminology of the deposits. The items uh, to be excluded from the term deposits are any amount received from the central government or state government or any other authority which are granted by the central government or state government, loans availed from the banks or financial institutions, any money received from any other company, an amount raised through issuance of CCDs, which are compulsorily convertible in shares within 10 years, an amount raised through issuance of secured debentures, where the security is created for 100% of the amount of issuance of such debentures, any amount received towards subscription of any security subject to allotment of the same is made within 60 days of the receipt. If the same is not 
allotted within 60 days then the refund has to be made within 15 days any other adjustment will not be treated as refund in that case any amount received and held in trust however the such amount should not be carrying any interest along with it any advance received for supply of goods or services uh, pro appropriation of which is made within 365 days deposit from director subject to a declaration that such deposit is not made out of the borrowed funds by such director in case of a private company relative of director shall also get included in this clause an amount received from employee not exceeding his annual salary and amounts received from AIFs domestic venture capital funds IITs and mutual funds shall also get excluded from the term deposit Apart from the items as mentioned in the earlier slide, deposit shall also not include an amount raised through issuance of commercial paper or any other instruments issued as per the RBI guidelines or notifications such as short-term NCDs issued with 12 months maturity and by private placement mode, promoters unsecured funding if the same is made on the stipulation imposed by such lending institutions, any other transaction not amounting to deposit in substance, collective investment schemes, security deposits, deposits from foreign corporate citizens, convertible notes issued by startup companies of an amount of 25 lakhs or more, which are either convertible into equity or repayable within five years. Chapter five of the act and the deposits rules provide certain kinds of prohibitions, allowances and requirements in relation to acceptance of deposits from members as well as public. Section 73 prohibits acceptance of deposits from public and on a combined reading of subsections 1 and 2 of section 73, it gives an impression that this section relates to acceptance of deposits from members only. For acceptance of deposits from members, the followings have been prescribed that is uh, deposit circular to be registered with the registrar of companies. Requirement of maintenance of deposit repayment reserve account of at least 20% of the amount of deposits maturing during the following financial year, which will be made on or before 30th April every year. Rate of interest should not exceed the maximum rate as prescribed by RBI. Section 73 states that subsection 1 shall not be applicable to banking company and BFCs as defined in the RBI Act 1934. Acceptance of public deposits is allowed only to certain kinds of eligible companies as provided under Section 76 and Rule 2 of the Deposits Rules. And in terms of the said rule, eligible companies are those public companies which have a net worth of not less than 100 crore rupees or a turnover of not less than rupees 500 crore and which have taken prior approval of the members of the company by way of a special resolution and the same is filed with the registrar. For eligible companies, there are certain other requirements also which they have to uh, comply with so, such as obtaining of a credit rating from recognized agency on a yearly basis and creation of security of an amount equivalent to the deposit so accepted. Section 76A imposes enormous penalty in case of contravention of Section 73 and 76 on the company as well as on the officer who is in default. And the company shall be liable for a fine of not less than 1 crore which may extend to 10 crore. And the officer who is in default, imprisonment which may extend to 7 years and of a fine which shall not be less than 25 lakhs which may go up to 2 crores. It is to be noted that this offense is non compoundable Apart from the limitations, restrictions or manner as provided under the sections of uh, Chapter 5, Deposits Rules 2014 also provide certain limitations, restrictions or manner of acceptance of deposit. Rule 3 restricts uh, the companies uh, to accept deposits which are repayable on demand or upon receiving a notice within a period of less than six months or more than 36 months from the date of acceptance or renewal and the company may accept or renew deposits for less than six months only if such deposits 
do not exceed 10% of the aggregate share capital, free reserves and secretaries premium account of the company and whose minimum tenure is at least 3 months. The limits on acceptance of deposits uh, have also been provided in Rule 3 that is uh, deposits from members by other than eligible companies will be allowed up to 35% of the paid up share capital and the free reserves along with the outstanding deposits from members and for eligible companies the deposits from members may be up to 10% of the paid up share capital and free reserves along with the outstanding deposit from members and in case of any other deposit that is public deposit the deposit amount can be up to 25% of the paid up share capital free reserves and the securities premium account along with outstanding deposits excluding deposits from members eligible company being a government company may accept deposits up to 35% of the paid up share capital and the free reserves of such company as per rule 3 the rate of interest to be paid on deposits shall not exceed the maximum rate prescribed by Reserve Bank of India for acceptance of deposits by MBFCs. A similar provision has been provided for payment of brokerage also, provided only such persons authorized by the companies to solicit deposits on its behalf shall be entitled to. Rule 4 provides that a circular or an advertisement issued in accordance with subsection 2 of section 73 or section 76 shall be valid until the earlier of the date of expiry of six months from the closure of the financial year in which it was issued or the date on which the financial statements of the company will be laid before the general meeting or the latest day on which the meeting should have been actually held as per the act. As per rule 6, a company covered under section 73 subsection 2 and every other eligible company who are inviting secured deposits shall provide for security by creation of a charge on the assets referred to in the balance sheet excluding intangible assets and the amount of such deposits and interest payable thereon shall not exceed the market value of such assets as assessed by a registered valuer. The security to be created in favor of a deposit trustee shall be on a specific movable property or on a specific immovable property of the company or interest thereon. In terms of rule 7, Company needs to appoint debenture trustees before inviting secured deposits and prior to such appointment a written consent has to be obtained from such trustees and the deposit trust deed has to be executed at least 7 days before issuing the circular or advertisement as, may, as the case may be. A person including a company providing trusteeship services cannot be appointed as trustee if such person is a director. KMP, officer or employee of the company or of its holding subsidiary or associate company or a depositor in the company or is related to any such person. If such person is indebted to the company or its subsidiary holding or associate company or a subsidiary of such holding company. If such person has any material pecuniary relationship with the company. And if such person has entered into any guarantee arrangement in respect of principal debts secured by the deposits or interest there. Rule 13 of the deposit rules provides the creation of deposit repayment reserve. It is applicable to every company raising deposits from members and eligible companies. And a company to park on or before 30th day of April each year a sum of at least 25% of the amount of deposits, whether secured or unsecured, maturing during the next financial year. And the amount has to be deposited with any scheduled bank, which shall be free from charge or any lien. The money so parked can be utilized only for the purpose of repayment of deposits. Rule 15 provides that in case of premature repayment of deposit on the request of depositor after a period of six months from the date of deposit but before the expiry of deposit period, the rate of interest to be paid will be the rate which the company would have paid had the deposit been accepted for the period for which such deposit had actually run, reduced by 1% and the company shall not pay interest at a rate higher than the rate so reduced. In case of failure on the company's part of scheduled repayment of deposits, Section 73, Subsection 4 empowers the depositors to 
approach the tribunal for directing order to pay the sum due or the loss or damage incurred. In case of fraud, Section 75 provides the penal provisions, which is the, if the company fails to repay and the defrauding is proved, the liability shall be as provided under Section 447. Unlike for the non-banking, non-financing companies that is NBFCs, which are required to observe the compliance requirements of Chapter 5 of the Companies Act 2013 and the rules, deposits acceptance by NBFCs are, while the definition of deposit has been provided under Section 45 IBB of the RBI Act 1934, the definition of public deposit has been provided in the master direction for NBFC's acceptance of public deposits. Deposit as per Section 45 IBB of the RBI Act 1934 shall mean an amount of money excluding the money raised by way of share capital or by all contributed as capital by the partners of the firm if the same is received from a scheduled bank or a cooperative bank or any other banking company defined under the Banking Regulations 1949, if the same is received from SFC or any other financial institutions under IDBI and other prescribed institution, if the same is received in the ordinary course of business as security deposit, dealership deposit, honest money, advance against order for goods, received from firm or an AOP, not being a body corporate and registered under enactment related to money lending, if the same is received by way of subscriptions in respect of each aid. The definition of public deposit is as per the RBI Act 1934 except certain items mentioned in the As per RBI directions, public deposit shall derive the meaning of deposit as per Section 45 I double B of the RBI Act 1934. However, the same shall exclude certain amounts such as amount received from the central government, state government, local authority, foreign government or foreign citizen or any amount received from IDBI or LIC or GIC and its subsidiaries or NABARD or electricity board and such other government companies that are notified by RBI or any amount received as hybrid debt instruments or subordinate debt instruments minimum maturity period of which is not less than 60 months provided there is no option for recall by the issuer within the period any amount received by a company from another company any amount raised by issuance of NCDs in accordance with the RBI guidelines maturity period of which should be more than one year and the minimum subscription per investor is rupees one crore and above Unsecured loan brought in by the promoter subject to the loan brought in in pursuance of the stipulation imposed by such lending institutions in fulfillment of the obligation of the promoters to contribute such finance and the loan is provided by the promoters themselves and or by the relatives and not from their friends and business associates and exemption under this shall be available only till the loan of financial institution is repaid and not thereafter or any amount raised by the issue of bonds or debentures secured by mortgage or any immovable property of the company or any other asset subject to the amount of such bonds or debentures shall not exceed the market value of such immovable property or other assets or an amount received by an NBFC SIND by issuance of perpetual debt instruments in accordance with the RBI guidelines or an amount raised by the issue of infrastructure bonds by an IFC as specified by the central government under section 80 CCF of the income or an amount received and held in accordance with the provisions of the Companies Act 2013 towards subscription of securities including share application money pending allotment for not more than 60 days an amount received from a director of a company or a shareholder of a private company or by a private company Provided amount should not be borrowed funds or a declaration to that effect is to be given. Any amount received by mutual funds regulated by SEBI and the issuance of commercial paper in accordance with the guidelines. Considering the definition of deposit and public deposit as per the RBI Act and the RBI directions respectively, certain instruments of funding for financial entities shall not be treated as deposits such as secured debentures, secured bonds, Compulsorily convertible bonds or compulsorily convertible debentures, NCDs having minimum subscription of 1 crore and minimum maturity of 1 year. 
hybrid debt instruments, subordinated debt instruments, commercial paper, infrastructure bonds, perpetual debt instruments. That's all for the day. Happy learning and thank you.